Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and this is I Am Loved Church. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for today. Thank you, everything, for everything, what you do, what you have for us. Father, I pray that your people who desire to know you, who desire to hear from you, would hear from you this day, not from me. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your Holy Spirit. I thank you for your forgiveness in your blood I don't deserve anything we don't deserve anything father again I pray that you would speak to your people the truth father we need the truth even if we hate it even if we don't like it even if it stirs us inside father you say the truth will set us free so so we are waiting to hear for you to help set us free from all the lies in this world. There's so many. Again, I thank you for today. I praise your holy, glorious name. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Let's get to it. Today's sermon topic is blessing for obedience. Today's sermon topic is blessing for obedience. Many people in this world seek the blessings of God without seeking God. Everybody is created in the image of God and desires to be happy, however, searching in all the wrong areas to be satisfied. We were created to obey God. And when we do not, we are rebelling against Him and is against His nature. And we are rebelling against our nature. Like a toaster not being able to toast or a car not being able to transport people or a plane that cannot fly. You and I were designed for a specific purpose in life. And until we fully obey what we were designed to do, we will never be completely happy or satisfied in our lives. God does not put people in hell. People walk away from him. They rebel against what they were created or designed to do. Therefore, they, that is why they feel that they are unaccepted. That is why they feel judged by everybody. That is why they have no peace or genuine happiness in their life. Because they are rebelling against what they were created to do. To worship God and serve Him. People worship all kinds of things outside of God. In order to find happiness and fulfillment, they go into drugs, they go into money, or seek money, they seek power, many go into lots of pleasure, or sex, some people seek fame or possessions, or their accomplishments, some people are really worried about their self-image. The lusts of the world never cease. They bring temporary joy or happiness. Temporary. But in the end, they need more. And even when they have obtained all the things that they thought would bring them happiness, they're still unsatisfied with their life. The only true happiness we can ever have in this life is in serving the living God and following His plan into eternity. 
For without that, everything becomes meaningless. Let's get to it. It is, again, our sermon, Blessings for Obedience. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your baskets and your kneading trough will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord, your God, will bless you in the land he is giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people, as he promised you on oath, if you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him. Then all the peoples on earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord God, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock, and the crops of your ground, in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouse of his bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them. You will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from the commandments, from any of the commandments I give you today, to the right hand or to the left, following other gods and serving them. I'm not going to get into the commandments today. If you want to know what the commands are, they're all in here. There's only one Bible. That's it. Look at it for yourself. We're going to get into blessings for obedience. Again, that was a lot to take in. But I think it's going to be really good to break it down. Let's go. Again, it says, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 2, If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today. The Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. If is a condition it's a stipulation. It's a choice. To fully means to completely, without reservation, without anything held back. If you fully obey, it means to carry out, yield to, it means to surrender, to do what someone says. Lord is master, ruler over you. In your life, a chief or a commander over your life. To submit to him. And to carefully, cautiously, deliberately avoid harm. It's like sneaking. You want to be very quiet. You want to be very cautious and make sure you don't step on any eggshells. You get what I mean? Follow means to tread behind someone's heel, come close, like almost walking so close to someone that you're right on their heels. And the commands are the list of instructions in order to do. It's a high, to mean when it says high, 
It means it's something moral, it's ethical, it's honorable, it's honest, it's righteous. God will, that's a promise, put you above all people. And blessing, it means to be happy or to have some, someone's protection or to be protected wherever you go. Accompany means to partner or escort or guide or steer you or assist you. I mean, this sounds amazing if you ask me. These are just our observations, but if you ask me, if you decide to follow God in your life and fully, completely, without reservations, obey His commandments and carefully follow them, a lot of people misinterpret the Bible not by preference, but by opinion and feelings. I mean, by preference and opinions and feelings. We can't take our emotions into consideration when we are interpreting the Word of God. We have to draw out what God's interpretation is. And obey, even when we don't like it. And He says, I will bless you. I will bless you. I will be with you. I will guide you. Do everything, Jesus says, to enter into that narrow gate. For broad is the way that many will go. Just as we get paid for our work at a job, we will also get rewarded when we fully obey God's instructions in His Word. When we fall short, that's what grace is for. When you mess up, God says, I'll forgive you and I'll pick you up to try again. That's what grace means. It doesn't mean it's a license to sin and do whatever you want. It means you get another chance. And he's very merciful, extremely. He'll give you another chance and another chance and another chance to try again and again and again. And you're always going to mess up. But he wants to see you try. <clears throat> We must carefully follow all his commands. That's a commandment. God is commanding us. God never changes. Old Testament, this Deuteronomy, you're probably saying, but God never changes. Jesus says, I have not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. Pick up your cross and follow me. You will fulfill it too. You may not get it right or get it perfect like I can, but that's why I supply my grace so you can try again. When you fall, I will wait and I will help you up so we can get back on this journey and try again. I love this analogy that I heard one of my pastors say. He said, every religion in the world they're trying to get to God on this mountain. But in the Christian faith, God comes off his mountain, takes us by the hand, and walks us up. Whatever situation you're in, God is with you. But you're not there to make it your address. He's waiting so he can forgive you give you the grace to stand up again and carry on moving up that mountain. We are blessed when we obey God and follow His teachings. He loves those. He loves all of us. But a lot of us, we just give up. A lot of us think, I'm not perfect, so I don't have to try. You're right. None of us are perfect. However, just like a good father he is, He's not going to give up on you. He's that coach rooting for you. He's saying, you know, I really want you to go to church. I really want you to get plugged in. I really want you to try. Again, don't give up. I'm rooting for you. That's why he gave us his spirit. Not an iota of the law will be vanished until all is fulfilled. And he says, I will help you accomplish what you thought or think is impossible. There are 
is no blessings without obedience. There's no blessing without obedience. You don't just go to a job and don't do anything and expect to get rewarded. It's not how it works. God created you to bless you. You were created to, to be blessed. So when we look at the tragedies in this world and we see everyone suffering, you know, financial, physical, you know, health, friendships and relationships being not good, they're outside of God's will for their life, for the most part, most of them. But he created to bless us. He did not create this world so we can suffer as we see everywhere around us. Blessings could also mean to be happy. A lot of people think it's possessions. It's not possessions. It's not possessions. It's not accomplishment. It's not what you have or you do. It's just simply who you are. A lot of people don't have genuine happiness in the world or joy or even peace. What you do is what you believe. Now, we're going to get back this, get on this a little later. A lot of people believe that they're Christians. Someone said yesterday at a men's group, I know who it was. He knows who it is if he watches this. They're cultural Christians, right? They're no more Christians than someone who, I don't know, visits the United States and says, I'm an American. As an American, you have to obey the laws of the land. And they're on a temporary obedience because of everybody else. They don't really believe that God is real and they don't really serve him. They just say, you know what? The American culture says they're Christians, so I'm a Christian too, I guess. They just default to it. They don't read the Bible. They don't even practice it and try to live by it. They just say, I read the Bible every day, so I'm a Christian, you know, or I grew up in it. That's not a Christian. It's not a Christian. We're going to get into that a little more later. God has the power to set people high and put people down. Now I know this is hard to look at. I know this is hard to believe. But trust me, God is in control over everything. I know we know what's going on in politics. It's always going on there, you know. But God has authority over all things. So don't worry. Serving the Lord makes us happy. Serving the Lord makes us happy. It does. Serving the Lord makes us happy. You ever get become happy when you see your kids doing what you told them to do? Especially you fathers out there, you should. You love it when people listen to you, don't you? And obey you. God loves it when we do the same for him. It brings joy to him when we obey God. And that joy... I believe he gives it to us. Just like we want our children to listen to us, God wants to, uh, us to listen to him. And when we are listening to him, it makes us happy. When my daughter listens to me, it makes me happy. And she sees how happy it makes me. And she wants to listen to me more. And she smiles. It makes me happy. It makes her happy. It makes us both happy. So serve the Lord. You will be happy. You will find happiness. Happiness in life is only found in serving God and doing his will. Like I said earlier, many people in this world seek to find happiness outside of serving God. Maybe if I get this possession, maybe if I have this accomplishment, maybe if I have enough money and I can do whatever I want. The only true happiness comes in serving God. People seek all kinds of things to be happy, but never find it. That's so true. You can look at the world and see that people are still not happy. For all these reasons. Because of this, because of that, because of him, because of her, my past, whatever. That's not God's will. That was their own doing. Whether they're rich or whether they're poor. I've seen rich and poor people 
the same. And I've seen people who are wealthy and serve the Lord and who are poor and serve the Lord. And they're just happy. They don't care about their money like that. They're just being responsible with it. With God gave, gave them it. So, is God your Lord? Is he your master? Is he your father? Is he your Abba? Do you look to him like children look to their parents? Are you fully obeying God in your life? Where are those areas you can improve? Are you carefully following his word? Right here, there's no other Bible. There's only one. Are you carefully following what it says? Even when you don't like it, even when you have your own opinions, you believe and trust that he knows better than you do and I do and everyone around here. Are you care joyful in serving the Lord? You see, there's two kinds of Christians in this world. Those who serve the Lord to seek attention for themselves and those who actually serve the Lord. Find yourself on this side. If you're serving God, you will find happiness. You will be joyful in whatever you're doing. You could be, you know... I don't know, whatever the worst job in the world is. I don't want to say it because you're probably, that's probably your job. And it's probably not the worst job in the world. It's just probably my opinion. But whatever it is, you should find joy in it. You should find happiness in doing it. I remember I worked at a gas station over here and I was cleaning the bathroom. They asked, oh, no one wanted to clean the bathroom. But I have the spirit of Christ within me. And... I get it. It's a gas station, truck drivers, you know, people such as such and so forth. I'm not saying all truck drivers are dirty. Don't get me wrong. You know, with that being said, I was so joyful in doing that. It's not because of me. It's because God wanted me to do it. And he anoints us and he blesses us as we do the most difficult things that people don't want to do, whether it's disgusting or whether it's hard. God says, you'll find joy in doing it. The world well, will not, because they are not doing it for the Lord. They're doing it for themselves. That's another kind of Christian. Whether they're non-believers or the people who say they're Christian and they want to get attention for themselves. Are you happy in your life? You see, we can really discern if we are in God's will, if we have genuine happiness in our lives. If you don't have genuine happiness in your life on a consistent basis, I know we have bad days, but if you don't have genuine happiness in your life, then you're probably more than likely not in the will of God. You're in your own will or something else, which is not good regardless. You're either in God's will for your life or you're outside. Or maybe you're half and half, you know. You're, you, maybe it's because you, you struggle. That's, that's going to happen, you know. Or maybe you're you're just not fully there. You're just kind of, yes, this is the plan. This is not necessarily the plan God has for you, but it's what you're settling with. You're still probably saved, but and God still loves you, but he really wants you to walk in this. He really wants you to have this. He wants you to step out in faith and move into this. This is what he really wants for you. But, you know, because of your faith or because of whatever, you're just settling in the Lord's will. His other will. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. Again, blessed could also mean holy or sacred or consecrated. Consecrated is set apart. Having favor. Don't you just want to be the first one to be chosen for like, I don't know, basketball team or something when you're playing with your friends. Like, that's the, you know, I'm with that person. Well, that's how God would select us in the sense of not, we're not better than the other one. We're, we just have favor with him. In other words, we're in right standing with him. I mean, you want to be right standing on your credit report, right? You want to be right standing with people in society. And so, all of that doesn't matter if you're in wrong standing with God. You need to get in the right standing with God. And God says, if you obey me, you will be in right standing with me. You will have favor with me. And so when you pray to me, 
I'll answer your prayers. Mind you that God is in control of the heavens and the earth. He's in, he's in control of the gravity. He created the gravity. He created color. He created everything that you see and don't see except evil. And by his word, he holds the power of this pulpit together. He holds the power of my body together. He gives us breath. He has authority over all things. And so in this, he says, I will bless you. I'll give you favor. And when I give you favor, you will have genuine joy, genuine peace and happiness in your life. And you will have it in the cities, outside the cities, at home, wherever you're at. God promises us, if we obey him, to bless us. Everywhere we go, we will be blessed. Everywhere we stay, we will be blessed. Happy. God promises us his approval over our lives when we fully obey him. What's stopping you from obeying God? What has God called you to do? Why aren't you doing it? Because of this, because of that, because of... you either need to repent or you need to have faith. <laughs> it's either one of the two. <laughs> and do it. Do you feel blessed in your life? In other words, happy or joyful in serving God. If you do, then you're in God's will. If you don't, you're not in God's will. God never changes, and we are to emulate that same character. Not in our own strength or wisdom, but simply, if God says, stand right here, if you stand right here, you will be blessed. This is the blessed spot right there. If you stand anywhere else, even a slightly over, slightly over here, over here, over here, you won't be blessed. My blessedness is right here. This is where I've blessed. So stand right here. And you move right there and you're, you have genuine joy, genuine happiness, genuine favor. You just, whew, wow, this is where God wants me in my life. Is it like specifically like two inches here? Like I know I just kind of said that, but no, it's, it's doing what God wants you to do. Moving in the direction you were created to move and do. Just like the toaster that was meant to toast and the plane that was meant to be a plane and not anything else in the car and such and so forth. We too have a mission in our life to do things. And, and when, until we do what we were designed to do, we're always going to feel like we're not at peace. We're always going to feel like something's missing. And someone described it, that's a God hole in your life. And until that gets filled up, instead of trying to fill it with money and sex and, and fame and all those other things, you're never going to be happy. You need to fill it by obeying what God has for you. And the reason you don't feel peace and joy and contentment in your life is because you're disobeying God. The fruit of your womb will be blessed, and the crops of your land, and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds, and the lambs of your flocks, your basket, and your kneading trough will be blessed. I mean, he's basically saying everything you have will be blessed. Fruit means reward, or result, or profit, or benefit, or lots of children. You will see results in your life. Good results. You will see some sort of profit or gain of something. You know, the womb being a you know, womb of an animal, a womb of your wife, or just simply your stomach. You'll be blessed. Your stomach will be satisfied. There are some people who just can't stop eating because they're never satisfied. I don't know about that. Crops, harvest, produce, fruit. Basically, everything you set your hands to, everything you have will be blessed. Uh, land, ground, open space, your property, or livestock, farm animals, assets, your strength, your talents, your gifts will be blessed. Your herds, your flocks, your pack, your group, your people, your crowd, the, your company. Every time you're around people, you'll be blessed. Or around a crowd, uh, your lambs, you're a symbol of you know meekness or gentleness and innocence. 
or animal, <laughs> would be blessed. A flocks, group, congregation, mob, gathering, assembly. Like I said, everywhere you go with whomever you're with, you'll be blessed. You'll find genuine happiness and joy and peace. Your baskets, your eating, or what you eat, or sleep, or what you do, or who you're with, you'll be blessed. A kneading trough, a manger, a feeding container, place of eating. Now I know, again, when we hear bless, 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 and we see these, like, or hear these, you know, uh, places and, and things, I know it sounds like God is a prosperity God that I'm preaching, but I'm not preaching that. People, like I said, they go to the extent to accomplish all the things they think they need to accomplish or obtain all the things they need. They think they need to obtain to find happiness. They think because if they get these things, if they accomplish these things, if they have these things, or if they do these things, they're going to be happy. That's all they're looking for. I want to be happy if I go and do this, or if I have this, or if I accomplish this, then this will make me happy. And it's not the truth. It's not the truth. And so when I mean blessed is what I mean is they'll finally be satisfied. And if you're satisfied, then you'll, you'll be happy. You'll, you'll have joy. If you're finally satisfied, you ever sit down and eat a, just a good meal and it just hits every point in your body, in your mind, you know, it was, just, it was just good from the moment you tasted it, the moment you swallowed it, the moment you digested it. You know, it was just great. It was good. That's what God is talking about. He's like, everything in your life will be like that, you know, like I said, people in this world, they don't have that, so they need more and more money, more power, more fame, they need to accomplish more things, and it's just like, they're never satisfied, they're never happy, everything you do will be blessed, you'll have great joy in doing it, your pantry, your food supply will be blessed, in other words, you'll just have, you'll have more than enough, than you feel that you that is enough. A lot of people they just they just stock up their houses with so much food and they just they just keep shopping. They never think it's enough. God has promised us the blessings to all who obey him. These blessings come upon us when we attempt and practice day in and day out to obey him and his word. Many people throughout the world try to obtain these blessings on their own. The American dream is a lie. I'm going to say that again. The American dream is a lie. Right? You got to have all these possessions. You got to, your family has to look like this. That's, that's God. God is not America, first off. God does not need America, first off. We need God. This country was founded on the Bible. So this American dream came from in here. And God says, when you obey me, you will be blessed. You will have the American dream, which is just the spinoff off of my word. People are so jealous of those Christians who actually have pretty good home because they obey God. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The whole world wants to come to America to have the American dream. They want to have the white picket fence. They want to have the nice home and the family and the barbecues and the smiles on your faces. You know what I mean? And we get that because we serve God, the one true God. Every other false religion does not know our God. The American dream is a lie. It came from the Bible and it's still true today and forever and ever and ever. They get everything else. They make the house look nice. They make everything look nice, but they don't have the genuine love and joy. It's advertised everywhere throughout our world, right? You go into, I don't know, some like clothing place. 
some nice clothing place, right? You see, like, the kids are like that. You know, you see the dads are like that. You know, I got you, kid. You know, you see the, the wife who's like, you know, I'm so happy. You know? <laughs> and they go and they buy the clothes. They think, oh, that's going to make me happy if I get those clothes. That's going to make me happy if my car looks like this. That's going to make me happy if... <laughs> It's a lie, man. It's from here. This is going to make you happy, man. This right here. You serve God. That's where the American dream comes in. You know? It's not about the stuff, man. That's keeping up with the Joneses. The Joneses can't even keep up with the Joneses. <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a great analogy. Mix in with the story. Of this man named Solomon found in the Bible. I'll try to give you the short version. Bear with me. Solomon was the son of King David. David in the Bible was little David who slayed Goliath with the slingshot. And he became a king when he finally got old enough and went through all his trials and stuff. He had a son. And he counseled his son and said, son, obey God. Obey God. Follow his instructions. And David passed away. And Solomon, before or after David passed away, he became king. He was already anointed when he was born to become king. And he listened to his father. He said, if God is the only thing that I need to fear, is the only person that truly matters, is the only reason I exist, and I will serve him. And lo and behold, he did most of his life. And Solomon prayed this prayer. I believe it was his first prayer. He prayed for wisdom to lead Israel. Prayed, God, I pray for wisdom. And God, being all wise, he granted this prayer. And he said, because you've prayed for wisdom, I'll give you everything else. Because that is a great prayer. Wisdom? How to lead my people. We need to pray for wisdom all the time. How to leave our, lead our families. So God gave him wisdom. And he gave him everything else. Solomon was the smartest man on earth. He wasn't smarter than God because God gave him the wisdom. He was smarter. He was the smartest, wisest man in the entire world at the time. Solomon was so wise. Everyone in the world came to him for advice. Solomon also became the richest person in the entire world. He was so rich that his city was laid with with silver you could walk on silver streets of silver everywhere he had 700 wives one is enough for me <laughs> he could just be like you come here i want to sleep with you <laughs> he had everything you could ever wanted he writes this book called ecclesiastes you would think that this book would probably be the most amazing like man it's like you know, 700 wives, you know, streets of gold. You could walk around butt naked if you wanted. He was the king of the whole land. Everyone looked up to him. He was just so amazing and so smart. People from different countries, kings and queens, came and basically kissed his feet, you know, and bowed and worshipped him like a god. He writes this book. It's very short, but it's a book he writes. It's the most depressing book I've ever read in my life. Jim Carrey says, I wish everyone could become rich and famous and have all the things they've ever wanted to realize it does not bring happiness. And Solomon in this book, he says, vanity, 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 everything's vanity. Everything is meaningless, the preacher says. He says, I've, I've all the, I can have any woman I want. I've already had all all. I'm so rich, I don't care. I use it to wipe my butt. You know, I've accomplished all of my goals. I know you men, you want to accomplish a lot of things. 
Solomon did that. He said, every goal I have ever had, I've accomplished it. Any woman I could want, I've already had. I've had everything that the world tells us that will bring happiness and satisfaction and great joy. And in this little small book, it's the most depressing book I've ever read. I don't even like reading it because it's so depressing. I'm like, man, I'm so depressed, man. This book sucks. Man. It's like, it's so depressing. Like, what's the point of life? It's so meaningless. If everything is meaningless and vanity, 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 me, 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 me. And at the last part of the book, you know what he says? He says, there's only one purpose in life. Serve God. Serving God is the only thing that brings you true satisfaction. Serving God is the only meaning in life. It's the only thing that brings real joy. Serving God is the greatest thing ever. It's the greatest joy you'll ever have. It's the greatest euphoric you know, emotion you'll ever get. It's the greatest thing ever. Serving God, obeying Him. That's the meaning of life. So, that's actually what heaven is. Heaven is serving God. Heaven is serving God. And hell is serving everything else. Doing anything else but not serving God. And that's what I've experienced in my life. I've done all the things, mostly anyways, that the world says will bring you happiness. And it's temporary high. Yeah, it's like, yeah, sex, yeah, yeah, power, yeah, fame, yeah. And it goes away. You're just like trying to get it again. And it's just like, man, what's the meaning of life, I asked myself. And then I went on my journey, and I found Christ. I've never been so content in my life, so happy, and so peaceful. With that being said, serving God is the only true way to happiness. There's a saying in the world, how to find true happiness. Be yourself. You know, get rich, become famous. Da 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 da. And everyone falls into that trap. Most people stay in that trap. The definition of hell to me, now that I'm a Christian, serving God and obeying Him and doing what He wants me to do. The definition to me of hell is doing everything but serving God. Like, I look back at my life and I'm like, that was hell. I thought I had everything I wanted. I thought that that brought me happiness. All the friends, all the fame, all the money. I was miserable. I was miserable. And that's what everyone wants. That's what everyone thinks will bring happiness. The only thing that brings true happiness, lasting happiness, is serving God. Do you want the blessings of God over your life? Obey Him. Do you want great joy in your life? Obey Him. Are you tired of being let down by chasing after everything the world promises that will satisfy your life and bring you happiness? Are you tired? They're illusions. They're not real. Only God is real. Obey Him. Do you believe God will fulfill His promises for your life? His promises are here. Obey Him. Will you choose to follow the teachings of the Bible today forever? Will you choose to not just open the Bible up and read it to understand it? A lot of people read it and go, oh, read it. Didn't understand any of it. <laughs> or would you actually open up the Bible 
and try to understand it. I'm still reading the Bible for three years straight. And I still don't understand a lot of things in here. I understand what the Bible says. But I don't, it just, every time I look at it, it's like new. It's brand new every day. I look at it, it's like, I read that yesterday and I didn't see that. You know, I read that three hours ago. I didn't see that. It's the same thing. I'm like, every day I wake up, it's new. It's fresh. It's like fresh water every day. You will be blessed when you come in and blessed when you go out. The will is having staying power or having a habit of or dedication or strength of character, a commitment, a purpose, or determination. You will. God says you will. Inside and outside, God promises all his blessings wherever we go, wherever we stay, when we obey him. The entire world is looking for blessings and acceptance in all the wrong places. But they are only found in obedience to God. In the word of God, the God of the Bible, the living God. The hardest thing for people to give up is their will. People will do this, will do that, will go there, will go here. We will. God says, that is why you suffer. That is why you don't have peace. That is why you're not happy. Because you will do everything but do what I want for you. I'm going to take a moment and just say, yesterday in my life, just hanging out with my family, one of the most amazing times I've ever had, seeing my children laugh and play, that brought so much happiness to my heart. That's what God wants for us. He wants to, us to not just have children to say we have children, but to find joy in our children. Just sitting down and just watching my children for hours playing. I was like, that's so awesome. This is what God wants for me. Man, I thought like having accomplished this or doing this or having this would bring me happiness. And God's like, just sit down and just watch your children. If you can't get joy in your children, man, you'll never find happiness. Or just joy in watching children. All right. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction, but flee from you in seven. That's amazing. I don't know about you. I don't like enemies. When he says the Lord will grant, he means the Lord will allow. The Lord will permit. The Lord will bestow, the Lord will provide that your enemies who challenge you, your foes or rivals or opponents or opposers or competition or competitor who rise up against you will be defeated before you. I can count on both hands how many times I've made it enemies. And they see me, and they run away. <sighs> Before me. Because I serve the living God. He's the only one to fear. God promises all your enemies will not be able to stand before you. I've gotten so many scuffles verbally with people working at certain jobs trying to argue with me because I'm in God's will, because I serve him, he protects me from what they have to say. And they're terrified. They will accuse you when you're in God's will, but they can't find any fault like Jesus. They'll find fault if you're not in God's will, though. God wants us to fear and obey only him. You will know true freedom when you obey God. 
People are, are afraid of everything in this world. They're afraid of their neighbor. They're afraid of their job, their boss, their parents. Should be afraid of them. It's a healthy fear. But they're like afraid of what people think about them. That's the greatest fear in the world, right? What people think about you. They're afraid of all kinds of stuff. Their finances, not to have enough money, not this, not that. I ain't got all those gods to serve and to be afraid of. I got one God to serve and to be afraid of. And when you're afraid of him, you'll be afraid of nothing. When you're truly afraid of the living God, you will be afraid of no one. You will be afraid of nothing. And you will, will have true freedom because he's the only one to fear. I believe God desires to show us he has authority over all things. He desires to bless us. He has authority over your emotions. And so when you obey him, he can make you happy. He can give you peace. He can be like, boom, because I'm God. Boom, because I'm God. Boom, because I'm God. Not me, him. <sighs> you having a bad day? Pray. <laughs> You're afraid? Pray. Because he has authority over your mind. He has authority over everything. What are you afraid of? Why? There's only one person that you should fear. Fear God, not man, not people, not the government, not anyone, not anything. Fear God. And you will have true freedom. The Lord will send a blessing on your barn and on everything you put your hand to. The Lord, your God, will bless you in the land he's giving you. He says, I will. If you obey me, if you obey me, I will. I will. I promise. People have been trying to destroy the Bible since the beginning of time. Since before it was even written, they were trying to destroy God. They were trying to destroy his character and say, he's a liar. Then why is the Bible still here? Because he's not a liar. It says, my word will last forever. Even when I destroy the heavens and the earth and make a new one, my word remains forever. His promises to us. The Lord will bless your barns and everything you put your hand to. The Lord will bless you and the land he's giving you. He'll bless your house. Everything comes from God. I know man likes to boast in his effort People like to boast, look at, I work today, right? I mean, how many of y'all grew up with parents that said, <laughs> this is my house, that's my food you're eating, that's mine, that's mine. <laughs> that's pride. You got that strength from God. And it's your responsibility, because you're my parent, to take care of me. And we all know some people who can't take care of their kids, they lose their kids. Everything everyone has is from God. Everything. If you were born in America, praise God. If you were born in third world country, praise God. God has established that. If you're black, praise God. If you're white, praise God. If you're Hispanic, Asian, whatever you are, praise God. You have a problem with your race, you have a problem with God, because God made you what you are today. Oh, I shouldn't be a man, I should be a female. I shouldn't be a female, I should be a man. Now, you better take that up with God. He made you that for a reason. You should be what he made you to be, not anything that you think or feel that you should be. If you do not have it, God probably took it away if you lost friendship because you weren't grateful for it. Usually that's the way it works. I mean, usually. I know there's a lot of situations and terrible people in the world that seem to be blessed and are completely evil, but God will render justice. I'm not talking about that. What I'm talking about is you and me. You can learn from anything and you can learn from even the most horrible situations and even the most horrible people. God has allowed things to happen for reasons. Yes, we make choices, but God says, I will get the glory. 
I will fix your life when you obey me. God chooses what he will give to people and what he will take away. God has the ability to make everything in your life go well. If you fully obey him. Like I said, you wonder why people are unhappy in this world? Because they don't obey God. They think they're God. God of their own life. You know, I have nothing to fear. I have all the money in the world. Get away from those people who don't fear God. <laughs> That's why I, I'm like, you don't know Jesus? You don't fear God? Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> You're not. We're not hanging out. You better get right. You, you're not thankful for the breath that you take is from God? That's a gift? No, I don't. I don't fear nobody. Like, then you're never going to respect me. You don't ever want to be around someone that doesn't respect you. That's a nightmare. Do you believe that God has given you everything you have? Everything. From every breath you take, to everything, even this, even this pen, God has allowed that I can have it until I have to give it back. Why does God entrust you with what you have currently? Are you grateful for what you have? Do you believe God has taken things away out of your life? Or ended relationships for a reason. Maybe because you didn't value what you had. Maybe. Not always the case. Are you grateful for what you have right now? The Lord will establish you as his holy people. He has promised you an oath. If you keep the commands of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all the peoples on the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord. And they will fear you. The Lord will grant an abundant prosperity in the fruit of your womb, the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground, and the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. God has promised every single one of every human being, if they obey him, the ancestors, all of us, that he will do the same for each and every one of us. God does not play favorites. Man plays favorites. God does not change his standards. Man changes his standards if... God set a standard, for example, and he said, if you wake up every day and brush your teeth, I will bless you. My standards never change. That's a promise. So you know that you're in the right when you obey my word. My standards never change. Every day they're making up a new law on planet Earth, right? And they're changing things around constantly that's not a good standard to live by i don't want to live under someone authority whose authority always changes that sucks i've worked under supervisors like that they suck i love them but they're not smart you know what i mean and you don't want to live under anyone's authority that way today they have this standard and then tomorrow they changed it the next second they changed it. Today they like you, and tomorrow they don't like you. That's not good. That's bad. There are people like that, too. Everywhere. I've been that way. Forgive me. That's horrible. You know? My wife comes to me, and I tell her what I like. And then the next day, I tell her something different. And she's like, I don't understand. How could you keep changing? Why are you keep changing your standard? Well, first off, because we're all sinners. Second off, we should stop. We need to plant our feet somewhere. We need to plant our belief somewhere. Because the world is confused. And we will make our children confused. God desires to establish you as his citizens. Like I said earlier, in order to become a citizen of the United States, you have to go through all the
paperwork, and you have to obey the laws of the land. Well, it's the same thing to become a Christian. It's the same thing to enter into heaven. You have to obey the laws of heaven, the laws of his land. This country may be falling apart, and they're taking away the Bible. I don't but I know I have a safe place in heaven because I try to obey him. I don't get it right. That's why he gives me grace and gives us grace. But I at least get back up and try again. How do you know you're going to heaven? Because I try to obey God. And I'd be very scared not obeying God. People think they're going to heaven because they go to church. People that think they go to heaven because their aunt goes to the church. I don't know. <laughs> People think they're going to heaven because they were raised in it. But when I read the Bible for myself, as I encourage everybody to do, it says something completely different. Oh, I'm saved by grace. I can do whatever I want. It gives me a license to sin and talk however I want and to act however I want. And when I read the Bible, oh, it doesn't say that. It says, if you obey the Lord your God, I will bless you. I will bring you to heaven with me. Pretty much, that's what it says in meetings. When people are just doing whatever they want, never open the Bible, never try to understand it. They just say, oh, I read it. Or just say, I'm a Christian because I live in the United States, and most people in the United States are Christian, I guess, so... That's a scary place to be. Whew. God promised us a long, good life. He's faithful. Keeps his promises, even when we fall short. People of this world should fear Christians. Not just because we worship the only true God who has all authority and power under his feet, but because we tell the truth about sin. We tell the truth about people's behavior. It's written on our conscience. God put the law in our hearts. So we already know right from wrong whether we read the Bible or not. And we expose them. We expose evil behavior. And they hate it. They hate being exposed for what they are. The land will be blessed and will flourish when we obey God. There are just people that I've met in my life. They're never happy. They have everything you could ever want. They have everything that the Joneses have, the keeping up with the Joneses. And they're just still not happy. I live in a... I don't have dirt. I have AstroTurf because my yard sucks. <laughs> but I don't care. It's okay. I'm content with it. I'm grateful for it. Now these people are just like, oh, the grass is not high. And they get my scissors and <laughs> make sure it's perfect. And it's like... Dude, like, I thought we were hanging out. I thought we were going to spend time with each other and just, you know, get to know one another. No, it's got to be perfect. <laughs> it's horrible, man. That's hell. Do you desire to be a citizen of God and represent his name? If you're my children, my children obey me. For what parent has children who don't obey them? How do you know they're your children? I know they're your children because they act like you. I know they're your children because they obey you. I know they're not your children because they don't act like you. I know they're not your children because they don't obey you. And this is what God is saying right here. The children obey their fathers. They obey their parents. But rebels don't. How do, I, how do they know we're Christians? Because we obey the word of God. Because of the way we behave. So when someone says, I'm a Christian, and they don't, I watch them. And I listen to them. I watch what they say. I listen. And I'm like, if you're a Christian, then you're struggling. A lot. But I don't think you're a Christian. I think you think you're a Christian. 
because you step into a church every once in a while, because you open the Bible every once in a while, but you don't obey it. We obey it by faith. We don't obey it because it's convenient and everyone else watches us. That's not being a Christian. Being a Christian is to please the one that no one can see. No one sees God. No one believes it. But we believe it and we see him. And that's why we obey. We don't serve the eyes and ears of the world and say, Look, I'm a Christian because I do this. Or whatever. We do it because we know that he sees us all the time. And we desire by faith to please Him. Do you realize you will have to surrender to God to have these blessings in your life? The Lord will open the heavens, the storehouses of His bounty, to send rain on your land in season and to bless all the work of your hands. You will lend to many nations, but you will borrow from none. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail, if you pay attention to the commands of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them. You will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today to the right hand or to the left following other gods. He is your God when you obey Him, just like children should obey their parents. Then they are your pa parents. Then you are their children. Then He is your God when you obey his teachings, when you obey his word. Anyone can have a tattoo of Christianity. Anyone can wear a Christian necklace. Anyone can go to church. Anyone can think they're a Christian. Anyone can say they're a Christian. I know who George Washington is because of a fact that he existed, because of the facts in history. But do I know him? Have I sat down with him and had coffee with him? Can I relate to him? Have I talked to him? Has he talked to me? Who is Jesus to you? He's the guy that died on the cross. Oh, he's he's a good teacher. Um, he's in the Bible, you know. I, I don't know who you are. I know my kids. Do you know your kids? Do you sit down with them? Do you talk to them? Do you find out their interests? Do you relate to them? Do they relate to you? Do they know you? Or are they just in your house and you're like, there are those little people and they're looking at you and they're like, there's that guy or woman. <laughs> That's not knowing someone. That's knowing of someone. I know of this person I've seen at the store. You've said that before be about people. And people have probably said that before about you. But do you actually sit down and get to know them? And that's what God wants for us to do. He wants us to sit down and not just read the Bible but to have a relationship with him. There's a guy that said, where does it say in the Bible that God wants a relationship with us? If you don't get it, you'll never understand this. Pilate said to Jesus, what is truth? And if you ever watched the Passion of Christ, it's not in the Bible, but it says, his wife goes to Pilate, and she says, if you don't know the truth, then no one can tell you. When I read this word, it's like I'm a child sitting down and my father is sitting next to me and we're having a relationship. How, are, how was your day? It's pretty good, you know. Why don't you understand this? I just don't get it, God. Um, kind of, you know, struggling with this and that. You know, that's okay. You know, we're going to struggle. Like a real relationship. You see, this world doesn't know how to have real relationships. 
a father doesn't know how to be a father, and a wife doesn't know how to be a wife, and the children don't know who they are. If you're a man, you need to get you a Bible, and you need to start building a relationship with God so you can start building a relationship with your spouse. You can build a relationship with your children and show them what a relationship is. Not just facts about things. I am going over time again. I'm going to try my best to knock it out. Let's do it. To be the head of something is to have authority over one's life. Or to be secure or content with your life. Not scared of tomorrow. Not worried about finances or harm. But you have peace. You have everything you need. You are satisfied with your life. There are people I meet that are just never satisfied with what they have. The tail is right next to the butt. And these are people who represent everything in their life seems to always be going wrong. There's no consistency of good in their life. Their emotions are up and down. They're always anxious. They're always afraid. Everyone around them is a threat. That's what it means to be the tail. Look at the world. It represents Satan and his kingdom. It represents rebellious people who are not serving the living God. And any day is just like going to be the end of the world. In their life or in this world. They're all rebelling against God. But those who serve God, they are consistent. For the most part. They're not perfect, but they're consistent. They have consistent peace. More days than less. And they're not worried or afraid of anyone or anything more days than less. God is calling us to pay attention, to observe His teachings, to learn, to, to, to marinate, to meditate on His Word. What does this mean? To investigate, to study, to listen to His teachings, to apply it. What good is it to look at the Bible and not apply it in your life? It's like you know the good thing to do, but you don't do it. Yeah, I know the speed limit is 75 miles an hour, but I don't care. I'm going to do 85. I'm going to do 80. I don't care. Then you get pulled over. Why weren't you doing the speed limit? Uh, I, I know the speed limit. I, you know. You act like you don't know the speed limit. Some Most people do. Oh, was I really doing that? You know you were doing what was wrong. You know the speed limit. You know what you're doing. You just chose not to do it. And you try to blame everybody else for why you did not obey the law. Do not turn away from any of the commandments. Do not turn away from the Bible to go seek false teachers. You see, that's one of the biggest destroyers of the Christian faith. It's okay to read a book about Christianity, and sometimes good Christian books complement the Bible. They help you love the Bible more. They should, right? Help you enjoy the Bible more. Get some things out of the Bible that you didn't understand. There are teachers that way. But sometimes there are just some bad teachers that are trying to lead you away from the Bible. If anyone is trying to lead you away from the Bible, instead of lead you more into the Bible, that is a false teacher or that's a false book. You need to get away from that teacher. You need to get away from that book. Do not turn away from the Bible. You should love the Bible more. You should spend more time in God's Word with God. The author is always there. Do not get distracted into the desires of the world or the teachers to serve other gods. There are many gods in this world. People worship anything. They'll worship this pen. They'll worship their drawings. They'll worship their movies. They worship themselves. They worship anything. They'll just, oh, you just look anywhere, point anywhere. You can worship it. The first commandment that God gives us is, you shall have no other gods before me. Stay away from idols. America is drowning in idols, idolatry. 
It's like God describes us as being like a, a wife who's a whore. It's in the Bible. It says whore a lot in one of these relationships. And he is, he is the husband. And he's trying to get his wife to become faithful. But she is a whore to everything around her. She serves everything around her, but she does not serve her husband. And God uses that analogy to describe his people. There's nothing wrong with alcohol. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with those things. But when you're serving them, when it's where you're finding your happiness or your joy, that's wrong. There's nothing wrong with that, about having a car, a nice car, a nice house. But when you're serving it, when it becomes the primary source of your joy, that's wrong. People serve all kinds of things. Their accomplishments. Some people even serve their failures. You think you had a bad life? Check out my life. It's pride. People serve all these other things. Some people serve their misery. My life was so hard. Everyone's life's hard. You gotta wake up, man. Only serving God truly satisfies our hearts and our souls. God is pleased when we fully obey Him. Will you choose to follow the Lord your God for the rest of your life? Will you choose to make the God of the Bible? There's only one God. Every religion in the world, every place is saying, There's only one God. And He's the God of the Bible. Will you stop turning away from God? Will you stop talking bad about His Word and start to open up the Word for yourself and find out who He is? Will you obey His Word? Not just read the Bible, but really understand it enough so you can start obeying it. I never get tired of reading the Bible. Are you willing to get right with God today? Right now? Repent of your sins. Trust in Jesus as your Savior. A lot of people in this world don't think they need a Savior. They think they can save themselves. You need a Savior for your sins. You need forgiveness for your sins. What happens when you sin against God? It's not about your standard or the world's standard or the government's standard. It's about God's standard. The standard that's written on your conscious, on mine, on everyone around us is conscious. And so when you sin against Him, you get guilt. You get shame. You get fear and anxiety. When you sin against the living God, and you've been sinning against Him since the moment you came into this world. God says, here are my laws. They're in your heart. If you disobey them, you will have a burden called sin over your life. Where demons can come and they can torment you. And no matter how many times you justify that you're innocent and justify you've done nothing wrong or have people tell you that you're in the right and you're not in the wrong, it will never take away your sin. Jesus says, unless you believe in me, your guilt will remain forever, tormenting you. People kill themselves because they are sinned so much against the living God They've sinned so much against God that they can't handle the guilt. They can't handle it. When you sin, you open the door for the demons and your conscience to feel guilty, to feel shame, to feel angry. And nothing you do outside in this world can reconcile you back in the right standing unless you repent of your sins and believe in the God of the Bible and the blood of Jesus will wash you clean of that guilt and wash you clean of that sin. So every time you sin in your life, every little thing you do, everything you say, you can sin with your mouth. 
You can sin with your thoughts. You can sin in what you do and how you live. And this world was designed for you to sin. Not God's creation, man's creation. Everywhere you look, if you're a man, there's always like a naked girl somewhere online. Look everywhere. It's like sin, 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 sin. And then you sin and you sin and then you feel more guilty and you feel more angry and you feel more. And your heart starts getting hardened or smaller like the Grinch. And then you start being more angry. And then you start being more jealous of other people. And then you start wanting to hurt people and hate people and get louder and all that nasty stuff. It's sin that's causing that. And Jesus says... You need to repent. You need to acknowledge the God of the Bible, who is the only true God. Unless you believe in me, you will die in your sins. Well, my life's horrible because of them, because of this, because of that. No, it's because of your sin. Repent of your sin. And he will wash you with his blood. And then you will be clean. And then he will put you to work to save sinners of this world. Everyone's lost in sin. But I have a Savior who saved me from my sin. His name is Jesus Christ. There's only one Jesus. Just like there's only one of me, Jeremy Shines, there's only one Jesus. Many people know a lot of things about me or think they know a lot of things about me that aren't true. Many people think they know a lot of things about you that are not true. Many people think they know a lot of things about God and Jesus that are not true. Will you... Are you willing to find out not just the truth about who you are, who I am, but about who God is and who Jesus is? Get yourself a Bible, repent of your sins, and start serving Him. For you were designed for no other purpose. And until you find out who He is, life will always be meaningless about everything else. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for today. Thank you for everything you've done, will do. You are amazing. You are so good. We don't deserve your forgiveness. We trespass against you every day. We violate your commands every day, but you're so rich in mercy. You gave us your only son to cleanse us of our sins, to give us a new life, a new direction, new thoughts. New desires. We have evil desires. You want to give us your heart. Your spirit gives us new desires to serve you. Thank you, Father, for how you love us. Thank you, Father, for everything you do. You don't need anything from us. Nothing. You need nothing. But you want us. You desire us. You love us. As a father should love his children. I praise and glorify your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.